Welcome to Suffolk Matters, where all of Suffolk County meets the men and women of Suffolk AME. News, opinions, and insights you won't hear anywhere else. Here's your host, the president of New York's largest independent union, Suffolk AME's Dan Leveler. Welcome to another edition of Suffolk Matters on Walk 97.5 and 94.3 The Shark, where Suffolk County meets the men and women of Suffolk AME. News and views you can't hear anywhere else. So my guest this morning is Legislator Jim Mazzarella, 3rd District. 3rd District. Suffolk County Legislator, uh, and I want to thank you for being on the show this morning. It's my pleasure, and I uh, thank you for the opportunity of being here. Yeah, listen, uh, big things going on, uh, you know, paying attention to a lot of, of campaign season as it ramps up. Uh, before we get into any of that stuff, and we want to specifically talk about you as a legislator and, and, and the things you've done. Let's start with a little history. Uh, you know, some of the folks that have, have heard you on this show before, they remember, and we've got new listeners, you know, tuning in and, and showing an interest in what's going on in this political season so why don't we start a little bit with your history, how you came into, you know, representing people and, and ultimately landing yourself in the spot as the legislator. Sure. So uh, my history is uh, I began in the labor business uh, as, a, as a union official back in 1990. I went to work as the assistant to the fund administrator at Local 342. Uh, we represent the same type of work as as AME. Sure. Uh, public service, you know, public, public, public workers. And uh, so I, I worked under the fund administrator on the, on the benefit side for a number of years, uh, ran for the executive board, started to get a little involved with the local and also some of the negotiations and kind of the rest was history. I, obviously, as time goes by, people retire. So I moved up into the fund manager's position eventually and then eventually uh, ran for secretary treasurer, uh, which is my current position now. So uh, I handle both negotiations as well as benefits, uh, so it gets busy there. But again, I've been doing it for 33 years, sure. uh, so uh, it's it's kind of become part of me now. So it's it's like automatic at this point. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's work like unlike anything else. Uh, you know, labor work is uh, I think very unique. Uh, the, the 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 types of situations you get into as it relates to people's working day. Uh, and, and trying to strike that balance, you know, it's different than when you have, like, say, a private employer and the company's making X amount in profit every year and, and you know, the employees want to share in that benefit. It's a little different with public employees because, you know, the money that comes in, those, that, that's revenue, you know, it represents tax dollars predominantly. There's certain revenue generating departments in any sort of, like, government, but it's, it's in the form of, you know, taxes or fees or whatever else and the whole nine. So... That balance, it, it creates, you know, as a public employee union representative, you have to balance the needs of your employees as taxpayers and as employees. So it's, it's, it's a unique animal, right? Absolutely. absolutely. And uh, I think what's, what's important is um, to understand both sides. Just like you said, you know, you're dealing with tax dollars. And I remember the, the president that was there when I got hired, he always says, you don't want to kill the golden goose. Right. And yeah. the golden goose mm -hmm. and, and our business is the government. Right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it doesn't behoove us that government doesn't function. Right. You know, but I think the business, uh, especially on the public employee side, is all about relationships. It is. And we need to make relationships with our government officials and uh, we need to be educators. Right. So. Sure. So uh, we need to have them understand what our workforce is doing, uh, the problems that they're having, the struggles that they're having. And also the successes that they're having, so it gives it gives the other side uh, a better uh, a better window uh, into into their own employees. And and I think again, it's all about education and, and relationships. Sure, you know, and when I when I speak with uh, some of the folks on my team, I try to caution them. You know, don't look at at the issues that we face in terms of friends and enemies. You know, a particular person in government on the management side has a particular opinion on a particular thing, and Therefore, you view them as an enemy, and it's an easy kind of trap to fall into. Uh, what we have is values and priorities. And if our values and priorities are different than the other side, that doesn't make the other person a bad person. Getting to know who they are, understanding their values and priorities is how you can come together and find ways to collaborate. And you may not collaborate on every issue, but, you know, especially I think of the horseshoe at the ledge. You know, you've got 18 different people, all different personalities, all different priorities, everything else. It's always someone you can talk to to make sure that your voice was heard, that your member's voice was heard, and that that ends up on the record of being part of the discussion. And that's really ultimately what you want. Absolutely. And, and 
So it's interesting that you say, you know, there's 18 folks on the, on the legislature. And uh, when we are approached uh, by uh, contractors, uh, developers, and, and law enforcement people and the like, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, there's, there's a certain uh, learning curve. Right. But I yeah. think for myself as an elected official at the legislature, when I come across labor issues, um, they're easy uh, yeah. because it's, it's what I do. It's who I am. And and that's kind of uh, unique. Um, I think we have, you know, we have a few people with some labor backgrounds sure. on the legislature. But the other legislators look to us and they say, hey, you know, they look at a they look at a labor contract. They have no idea what right. they're looking at. Right. So. Uh, I think it benefits us. It actually benefits, uh, obviously, the unions. Not that we're giving away to shop, no. but at least I can speak your language and, right. and say, hey, I understand what this salary chart means right. and, and what a step system means and what benefit means, you know, uh, because we've dealt with it. Sure, sure. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we really support all the different types, of, all the different walks of life uh, that end up on the legislature. Uh, you know, one of the unifying things that we love, you know, this, this quote-unquote unofficial labor caucus, the hand few uh, around the horseshoe that know labor, come from labor, have lived labor, have, you know, have had leadership positions, uh, you know. Uh, the advantage there to us isn't what you would think it would be. Uh, what it actually is is we, you know, we save about two hours on every conversation. We can sit down and we can discuss an issue and get right into it because you don't need the two hour history lesson on what the labor movement's about and, and why it matters and, and, and all the rest. Uh, and it's great. It's great to have people um, available at the legislature that know they can turn to folks with this type of experience as experts and say, Hey, you know, I, I don't really get what this is. Can you kind of guide me through it? Know that the resources are there. So. Right. And, and again, it's, uh, it's not always about money. And it's not always about giving away to store. Sometimes it's just understanding certain language may be hurting a cer certain segment of your membership. Right. And it may need, just need a, a language tweak right. here and there to, to fix a problem. You right. know, and I, and I point to your 9-11 to your dispatchers, right? Sure. We had a situation there where the language was causing a problem for your membership, for yourselves. And we were able to just talk our way through that. And I think we were able to do that because... You know, like myself, presiding officer McCaffrey, we're able to look at it and say, hey, yeah, we've seen these type of issues before. Right. And they have to be untangled. You know, right. most people would take a long time to grasp yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it was actually a pleasure to to be present for that and to and to be a part of, of working through that. And again, like I said, you don't you can't just throw money at every issue. Right. Sometimes you have to work through the situation at hand and it's not always yeah. Not always about just money. Yeah, you know, I think labor really focuses on the concept of value, right? And value isn't just money. It's benefits, and it's also how you treat it, how you feel as part of a, of a team, right? If you're in government with thousands of other people in government, you want to know that you, you matter, that you're cared about, that you're looked after. And sometimes it's just how you're addressed, right? Yeah. Showing, showing value back to the to the. To the individuals that provide the services to the to the taxpayer and right. say, hey, listen, you're a valuable member of the team, and and these are the words we use to show that. And I and I feel good when when your members come to us and they say, hey, listen, we have such and such a problem, or they'll call us and say, hey, and uh, and I, but I also understand your side as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm I always say, hey, let me talk to let me yes. talk to your union about mm -hmm. that. And, you know, if we can be able to go between and, and to diffuse situations and to, again, like you said, add value, at least to let them know, hey, someone is listening. We, yeah. we care about you. We care about your life. We care about your livelihood. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. And listen, you know, I mean, this is, I think, a perfect segue into going into some of the work you've done as a legislator now. So uh, you served as chair on the Economic Development Planning and Housing, uh, as well as chair of Education and Labor Committee. So, you know, maybe... Uh, Let's start with, you know, how, how have the first two years in office been, you know, and especially, you know, doing that kind of work? So, uh, first of all, it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. It's like anything else. It's like, you know, something brand new. But I, I viewed it as a challenge. It actually reignited my, my brain uh, because when you do something for so long, again, I love my labor job. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Put right. food on my table for 33 years. Yeah. It changes every day. You get to deal with people. 
but going into this really ignited my intellectual fuse again. I had to right. read, I had to learn, you know, and uh, and it was a lot. I mean, these two, especially the economic development job. I yeah. mean, it's probably one of the busiest committees in the county. Sure. I always say that in DPW. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's stuff coming at you all the time, developments and, you know, funding of them. And uh, so yeah. uh, it's a challenging committee. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to be there, but it's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. but, I'm, but I'm happy to be there. Education, labor, same thing. Um, I come from a labor background, obviously, so yeah. I was excited to have mm -hmm. that spot. Uh, work with the college. A lot of the college is uh, part, you know, part of your workers as well. Uh, but uh, we need to work together to, to make that college vibrant, yes. to make it relevant, to make it grow, to add programs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and that that's a win win for everyone, I believe. So. Yeah, I think there's a lot of untapped value with that college. You know, and, and in all fairness, there are education opportunities for for government workforce. There's programs that should be in place that the college offers that county employees can go to to improve their skills inside their work which gives them greater eco economic opportunities. Uh, that's, that's a positive. Uh, but it's really a great value. I think, you know, most of the people that I speak to about community college, the misunderstanding is it's like it's college light. No, it's full, it's full education. What it is is it's also subsidized by county and state dollars, not just on, uh, you know, the applicant of themselves, course. you know, the students that that's come the, up with that's the money. That's the affordability factor yeah. there. You know, they get a third, a third of the money comes from the state. Yep. A third of the money comes from the county. And then the, the third other tuition, third is, yeah. is the tuition. Mm -hmm. So it's a value. It's absolutely a value. And, and, and in all honesty, especially where I come from in the third district, uh, folks, folks need that value. Otherwise, they're not able to go on. Not everyone can afford a, a private education sure. uh, at some of these private universities. Even some st state schools have gotten to the point where if you have to go live there and pay your and pay your room and board and whatnot, it's not affordable to people. No. So, so we have to preserve the college and its programs, and and like sure. you said, actually expand on them. Yeah, I think that's something that we just need to keep highlighting, getting out into the world. Uh, and and again, I, you know, I, I expect to see great things coming out of out of the three campuses in Suffolk community. I think uh, you're going to see some people move on and do bigger and better things and talk about they got their start there. And uh, you know, folks folks looking to you know kickstart their career uh, without a ton of excessive debt, and they're going to be able to get a great education and go on to do great things. No question. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the third legislative district, the, the one that you represent. Now, obviously, as you sit as a legislator, you've got to worry about your district, but you've also got, you've got global concerns. You know, when you chair these committees, sometimes these projects and these issues aren't just located in, in the third legislative district. You've got to consider everything, but uh, let's just let's just hone down on the third third district and, and the work you do there. Sure. So um, obviously it's probably one of the biggest projects in the entire county right now, and, mm -hmm. and that's the Forge River uh, Sewer District. Yeah. Uh, that project is well underway. We're putting pipes in the ground every day. Uh, in fact, we're, we're, we're getting pretty close to being done laying the pipe. Right. Uh, in fact, on Monday uh, will be the first, uh, session where we are going to invite our residents in to actually sign off on the, they are what they call a, a resident uh, uh, it's a it's an application by where uh, they give us permission to actually go on their property so it's called the property access agreement yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right mm -hmm. and what that's going to do is going to uh, enable us now to go on their property put the put these uh, pumps in right. the units they're yeah. actually going to uh, pump the sewage to the street to the pipes, sure. and uh, it, it's all part of the plan. Uh, but this project is going to sewer nearly 2,000 homes and 200 businesses. Um, it's actually going to change the face of the community. Uh, the commercial portion of it uh, runs down Montauk Highway uh, from the Mariches area to the uh, probably just north of the William Floyd Parkway in Shirley. That corridor... Uh, the face of that corridor is going to change because Absolutely. of sewers. Absolutely. It's going gonna, it's gonna to enable businesses to have uses that they never had before. Right. It's going to enable businesses to come in that could never come in before. Right. Uh, you talk about sit-down family restaurants, which the mm -hmm. community has been pining for for years. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to give us an economic shot in the arm. Uh, in addition to that, it's going to protect our waterways uh, and, and our aquifer and not having 
that nitrogen load sure. go in through the old cesspool systems. I'll and, tell you what, uh, the uh, the Romans were smart, right? They certainly were. Uh, but, you know, I, you, you, you talk about economic development as a concept. I mean, something as simple as your government coming in and giving you access to sewers changes the quality of the businesses in the neighborhood simply because of what it is they can do. You know, the, the value that can be added back to the consumer going to these restaurants, having access to these restaurants without costing more money for the actual restaurant owner to operate and everything else is this all of these rules that are in place to protect public health, and they should be there. And putting sewers in place changes the whole game in a way that keeps public health safe uh, but allows for economic development like you wouldn't believe. And I think you're going to see some changing in the housing portion as well. There's opportunities there when, when, you're, when your property size, the density requirements change when you have access to sewer versus when you're on you know, leaching systems. And so there's going to be economic opportunity for homeowners and there's going to be economic opportunity for businesses. And I think it's going to, you know, really, I think you're right. It's going to change the face of the the district. Absolutely. And I I think the homeowners there are are looking forward to it. Uh, I know they are because we get questions all the time from other parts of the district that are not being sewered right now. And they ask, hey, when when are we getting sewers? You know, so and and we haven't even we haven't even flushed the first toilet. Right. You know, and it's uh, so. That's a good Exciting. problem to have. It's a good problem to have. I, uh, you know, I fully support that. You know, the the idea of putting something like this in place and everybody seeing that it works uh, gives everyone the idea, like, hey, you know, maybe maybe it's possible that we can do it too. Yep. You know, and there's a ton of opportunities across Long Island. It's really one of the ideal places for sewers. There's some yep. spots where it's not, uh, but there's there's ideal Absolutely. spots all over. And I and I and I have to again. I mean. Uh, I'm a little partial because I'm a union guy, yeah. but my hats are off to the union work that is being done in our community because this project is humming along at uh, a great pace. Yep. They're either on time or ahead of time. Yep. I don't like to tell people they're on ahead of time, <laughs> but they are They are doing amazing work. Yep. Um, anytime a resident has an issue, uh, if there's their road gets too dirty or there's, uh, you know, yeah. pebbles on their lawn or it got dug up. These contractors, they're on it right away. Yeah. They're professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's just, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a testament yeah. uh, to the union workforce yeah. uh, that's out there on our streets that work in every day. Yeah. And listen, there's a little hidden piece to this. It's not so hidden. Like if, if you understand, uh, you know, the, the economics in this, but, uh, what people don't realize, you know, they'll say, well, you know, the union, the union folks, maybe they cost a couple of bucks more. You know what happens with the couple of bucks more that you give to them? They put it right back into the economy. Absolutely. Right? They repair that fence that they needed repaired because they actually have the money to do it. They take that vacation because they actually have the money to do it. They do right. all the various things. Uh, you know, again, the, the, the idea that unions were the path to the middle class still holds true to this day. And so you're getting economic development simply by just having union guys on the job. There's no question. Yeah. And and this this is a multi-year project with tons of uh, union members in the street, yep. in our community every day, buying lunch, yep. possibly buying their gas on the way on mm-hmm. the way out of there or on the way in. Yep. So there there is uh, economies of scales that are benefiting our community just by having this work being done. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, so another project that uh, is kind of going on in your area I wanted to bring up was the uh, Smith Point Beach revitalization. How's that going? Okay. So, uh, so you're referring to the new bridge yes. that we're going to build, yes. right? So the the old bridge is a, is a draw is a draw bridge is an old old style draw bridge. They're not not using those anymore. Mm-hmm. The bridge is probably ten years or so past its useful life. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. they've been it's been limping along. They've been maintaining it, uh, but. Uh, they need a new bridge. There's no question about that. Sure. So, so where we are with that right now is uh, the design has been finalized. Oh, good. Uh, I spoke to the commissioner of uh, D- DPW mm-hmm. the other day. He said the design has been forwarded to the New York State DOT. Mm-hmm. DOT will now review those plans and design. They will uh, make it a determination to approve those plans. Mm-hmm. Once that happens, they'll actually start bidding out the job. Sure. So the job should be bid over the winter. Uh, we're hoping to have a shovel in the ground in the spring. Uh, the new bridge is going to be just west of the old bridge. Mm-hmm. When I mean just west, I mean just west. Just west. We're literally, you know, talking Stones about a hundred and change yeah. feet away uh-huh. from the new mm-hmm. bridge. 
Um, Which is smart, by the yeah. way. But yeah, it's going to come with amenities that we don't have now. Mm-hmm. So the new bridge is going to have a uh, walking and biking path. Nice. Uh, with a divider, like a protective yep. wall, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that you know people can do exercise across that bridge. And uh, we're and also get the view and get the beautiful view. Yeah. We're going to have a actually going to have a little kiosk area where you could stop, sit on a bench, oh, nice. read a little bit about the history of our community. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as we're going to put a fishing pier um, that's going to go underneath the bridge on the beach side so folks can actually, you know, access that uh, from the parking lot of Smith Point Beach. They can do their fishing. They'll actually be under the bridge, Mm -hmm. so they'll be protected from the elements, whether that be sun, rain, or or, or whatever, because a lot of these guys fish year-round. Sure. You know, they're they're pretty avid avid sportsmen. So we're excited about having that. Um, In addition, this uh, this past capital budget, I added money in to build a new recreation center, uh, just uh, basically just east of the where the new bridge is going to be. It's right. really it's really where the old bridge sits now, yeah, where yeah. it lands over on on the Smith Point side. Right. Uh, so we're going to have everything in one spot. You're going to be able to park, get to your recreation area, walk to the fishing pier, and also access the bridge all in the park area, which uh, that was a big part of. Um, the thrust, mm-hmm. uh, because we want to be able to maintain it and secure it rather than, you know, some folks are talking about, hey, put the fishing pier on the other side or so we, we try to we try to do it yeah. smart um, mm-hmm. so that going forward, uh, it's manageable in, in a financial way sure. uh, for the county, because we know we pay for these big projects, uh-huh. then you have to maintain them. You do. And you have to secure them. You do. Um, yeah. So so there was a lot of good thinking that went into Laying this, laying this plan out. No, that's excellent. That's, you know, again, I didn't want to pass over it because I know it's another great project. I mean, getting sewers in is excellent. Getting this bridge done is going to be excellent. I mean, these are good things for, for your district. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I mean, conveniently, I w- I'd like to segue into the election. You know, you, you, you were instrumental in working these things, and not just these things for your district. Like I said, you know, as a legislator, you sit and you hear issues on these various committees and, and the general legislature uh, that affect people all across Suffolk County. Uh, but specifically, you're running again for your district, and we've highlighted some of the things you've done for your district. Uh, so why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, how your campaign is going, what you're excited about, you know, accomplishing uh, it's, it, when you get elected again, you know, what it is you're looking forward to doing. Sure. So uh, I'll start in the beginning. Uh, and again, we talk about talk about sewers and we talk about this bridge. Um, I was born and raised in the community. I, I grew up in Shirley. I grew up riding my bike down William Floyd Parkway across that Smith Point Bridge to that park, yep. you know, for years, right? Uh, spending time in the bays, clamming, fishing, and what have you. So uh, I live and breathe the 3rd District. I mean, right. it's just who I am growing up there. I became part of my property owners association. I spent 10 years on that library board. I have a really good pulse for what's yep. happening in that community. Mm-hmm. And I know the community. I know the people in the community. So I think that's a big help. You can you walk around and you talk to people. They tell you their needs. They tell you their concerns. Yeah. They're, they're comfortable talking to you because you're, you're, you're one, of one of them. You're one of them, you yeah. Know? And uh, so that's a big help. So what gets me excited is is improving quality of life. That's a, that's a huge issue. I think it's an issue in every community, but uh, specifically we're, we're dealing with uh, a lot of quality of life issues that have to do with squatters, that have to do... Uh, with uh, vagrancy mm-hmm. that have to do with uh, obviously drugs and and speeding cars and 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 public public safety as a whole. Yeah. Right. So, I spend a lot of time at the police uh, precinct down the other side of William Floyd Parkway. Yeah. I was just there yesterday for an hour. I make sure that uh, I sit down with the commanding officer every couple of weeks. Uh, we talk about public safety issues in the community that affect quality of life. Sure. So uh, it gets me excited to just bring folks uh, who get up and go to work every day. Uh, yep. It's a it's a blue collar community. Mm-hmm. They just want to come home and enjoy their street, enjoy their yard, uh, you know, enjoy their community. Uh, and, and I want to make that happen for them. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about some of the issues in the district that you're addressing. And, you know, th- there's there's two things that come to mind for me that I think are right in your wheelhouse. And those that's the, you know, when you have these types of issues, you, you one thing you look at is what's the economic opportunity there, right? You know, are, are certain people falling behind and getting, you know, desperate and their behavior gets desperate. And the other thing is, you know, if they've been 
desperate for a little while, and there's that mental health component. Uh, so there's there's these things to work on that are just they're bigger, more complex issues, right? And that's that's something I like to talk about here. Uh, it's something that you know I like to kind of get out in the world. You know, it's it's never quite just the thing that you're talking about when you you know when there's issues in front of the legislature. You know, the conversations we've had behind the scenes and we talk about, okay, here's a particular bill, here's what it says, here's what it does. There's always so much more behind it. And there's always so many people on both sides of the issue. So uh, it really does take, in my estimation, really does take someone like you from the community, uh, being in the community, knowing the community, their needs, and, and being one of them to understand the complexities of all of these issues. And, and, and so even if a piece of legislation is refined down to a few lines of, you know, this, that, and the other thing, all of the complexity was talked through, worked out, and, you know, all sides heard from, and smart decisions made before it even, you know, got laid on the table. Uh, that's something, you know, I, I know that you, uh, that you pride yourself on, and it's just something, you know, to, to emphasize, you know, your ability to get things done. We talk about these major things that are going on in your district. Sure. Uh, that was that was a lot of complicated work. You know, sometimes uh, I guess it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. We have we have a lot of organizations. Yeah. In the third district, right. between chambers of commerce, uh, civic associations, homeowners associations. Uh, I have one tonight. Uh, I'm going to visit sure. next week. I have a chamber meeting. There, a week does not go by that I'm not meeting with a community group, mm-hmm. and and that's the time, uh, like you just mentioned, that is the time where you listen to the public about what their concerns are, what their problems are, right. how they think they can be solved. Because believe it or not, we're not always the smartest people on the block. Right. All right. You, you talk to people long enough. And sometimes if you listen enough, you'll learn. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's what I try to do. I try to, I try to, I try to listen uh, more than talk. Right. And, and I think if you do that enough, you, you, you learn something from, from the folks that are living those everyday issues. Sure. And, you know, that's one thing I know about you. You know, you talk about right now, you know, I'm, I'm out and I'm seeing people and not a week goes by. And that's not because it's election season. That's what you've done since day one. It's, it, that, is, that is a constant part of your job is getting out and seeing people and hearing from people, always engaging in conversation. There's no question. It's very, yeah. impo- it's very important that you that you listen to the folks that you represent. That's, that essentially is your job. That's why they put you there. From my perspective, on behalf of my members, I want to thank you for the way you comport yourself. Your understanding of labor issues uh, is a huge bonus for us. Like I say, it helps us uh, cut through certain types of conversation. We don't have to go through the history lesson on the labor movement, uh, but it's all the other things that you do as well that come together and, and kind of create the package uh, that, that is the legislator that you are. It's why you have the AME endorsement. You know, we have an exhaustive process in which we try and vet out, you know, who's, who's going to be the, you know, the best legislature for, you know, representing the issues that we have. Uh, but you've done that and so much more. So, uh, again, I want to congratulate you on, on all of the successes you've had so far. We look forward to your victory come this November and uh, continuing to work together. Thank you. And if I may, I just want to give a shout out to your workers. Uh, yeah. They make us look good. Okay. I have an issue at a park. I can always I can always count on AME labor official uh, labor uh, you know laborers to come out to the park, do what needs to be done. Uh, DPW the same thing on our roads. We call. Uh, we get those we get those folks out there. They're they're making us look good. Yeah. Um, your crossing guards are out there in all kinds of weather, oh, yeah. doing the job. And then there's all these unsung heroes that you have in the AME that work in all the offices, in all the county offices, and in the, in the college offices, that they don't get seen and they don't really get the, the, the recognition that they deserve. Right. They're pushing the paper, uh, but the, the folks in the county that need those services go into these offices, and it happens. Yeah. You know, and, and, and those folks, county clerk's office, comptroller's office, uh, they they don't get the recognition all the time that they deserve because they're they're not out there in the public being seen. Right. Uh, so I want to give a special shout out to to your clerks that are working in these offices behind the scenes that are making the county actually run. Um, I so, really uh, I really appreciate it, and you know uh, you know that that really matters a lot to them. They know that they're unsung. Uh, they come up, they come in every day. They get everything done the way they need to. If there's some sort of a crisis, like, say, a pandemic of some sort, they go in and they get it done. If we have some sort of a cyber incident where maybe a foreign player is coming in and trying to wreak havoc on, on county government, 
They come in, they get it done. You know, all of the things that are necessary to keep life in Suffolk County going, mm -hmm. uh, these, these are the bones that kind of keep the whole thing together and moving. So uh, I really appreciate on behalf of my members you taking the time to acknowledge them because I know, I, I know recognition is very important. Absolutely. And you have the perfect slogan. Suffolk works because we do. Yeah, absolutely. It's very true. So my guest this morning, Legislator Jim Mazzarella, representing the 3rd Legislative District, uh, good friend to labor, uh, excellent legislator. Again, proud to, proud to endorse you, and I appreciate you uh, coming down and, and spending some time with us. I know how busy this season is, so much appreciated. Thanks to you, Dan, and your team. Uh, you have an excellent team. They always reach out on all the issues that affect you and your members, and uh, my ears and my office door is always open. Excellent. Thank you. Thank and you. to our listeners, we will speak to you next week.